The dodo is an enigmatic creature that almost fell into the realm of mythology a few decades after its extinction. However, while we know that the dodo was certainly a real animal, few people know the reality of its appearance, habitat, behavior, and eventual extinction. The following video is a journey to the past, a journey to separate fact from fiction. Was the dodo just a dumb bird unequipped to exist in the modern age? Or were there special circumstances that contributed to its downfall? Let's have a look. Background About 20 to 25 million years ago, in the Miocene era, a bunch of tropical birds from southern and southeast Asia migrated west towards Madagascar and nearby islands on the Indian Ocean. Among them were the common ancestors of modern-day tropical pigeons, such as the Nicobar pigeon and the tooth-billed pigeons of the Columbidae family. Some of these prehistoric pigeons would stay on the islands, likely due to the abundance of food and the relative lack of competition and predators. It was a prosperous time for the birds, as they hopped from island to island eating their fill and growing in number as they evolved and deviated from their Asiatic ancestry. About 10 to 12 million years later, or 8 million years ago, underwater volcanoes would erupt and form three new islands east of the Madagascan archipelago. These new islands are what we call the Mascarene Islands today, and they consist of Reunion, Rodriguez, and Mauritius. Isolated and surrounded by at least a few hundred miles of water, the Mascarene Islands were only accessible to birds and beaching marine life like turtles and crustaceans. Some of the Columbidae birds duly migrated there, and once again, some of them stayed. This new real estate had virtually no terrestrial herbivores like lemurs or tenrics, and no predators, making it even more attractive. With no competition and no predation, the birds were all set for a luxury island vibes. Little by little, defensive strategies like nesting in trees and small nimble bodies became unnecessary. The birds grew larger and more terrestrial while their wings and flight muscles stopped growing or even atrophied. After a few million years, the flightless Raffinee subfamily was established on Rodriguez and Mauritius. On the former island, the Rodriguez solitaire, aka Pezophops solitaria, emerged. Mauritius, on the other hand, saw the rise of the solitaire's more famous cousin, Raphus cuculatus, or as it is more commonly known, the dodo. When was the dodo discovered? No one knows precisely when the dodo evolved into a distinct species, but it surely would have been sometime after the formation of Mauritius. All dodo fossils had been discovered on the island, and there was no way to reach the islands besides flight or swimming. Madagascar, the nearest region to the Mascarene Islands, is roughly 500 miles away. The island itself was first discovered by Arab sailors in the 10th century CE and was originally named Dina Arobi. It is also said that the island was familiar to pirates and other Indian Ocean privateers before the Portuguese found it in the early 16th century. However, there is very little Arab or Portuguese documentation that explicitly identifies the dodo birds. In 1598, a squadron of Dutch Navy men under the command of Admiral Wyburn van Warwick landed on the eastern island, a place now known as Grand Port. They named this new island Mauritius, after Prince Maurice of Nassau, and quickly began harvesting its rich ebony trees and building settlements. Unlike previous visitors, the Dutch documented the strange flightless birds native to the island. Van Warwick initially named them Walgvogel, which means tasteless bird. Other translations include sickly bird or insipid bird. The English would later borrow Walvogel and coin the term Walstock. The Portuguese would also call them penguin, but as a derivative of pinion, referring to the bird's relatively small wings. Other Dutchmen coined the term dronte, which means swollen. The exact origin of dodo is unclear. Speculators suggest it is taken from dodur, an adjective for something sluggish. Others say it is taken from dodars, which means not arse or fat arse. The dodo's tail feathers were notably documented as being knotted. Dodars is attributed to a 1602 journal by a Dutch captain. In 1634, English travel writer Sir Thomas Herbert was the first to use the word dodo in a published work. He claimed to have learned the word from Portuguese sailors, who are said to have used the word dodo, which means crazy or fool. Dodar was another common English term for the bird, but it disappeared from most people's lexicon by the end of the 1700s. Some claimed the name dodo was because of the bird's call, rather than its appearance or demeanor. These claims suggest the bird made a two-note call that sounded like doo-doo, 
The genus name Raphas refers to Old World bustards and was coined by French zoologist Mathurin Brisson. The species name Cuculatus means hooded and was inspired by Koalus Clusius's 1605 depiction of a dodo. Appearance and Behavior Most of what we know about the dodo is based on skeletal remains and written reports by people who saw it firsthand. There are also a lot of taxidermy models, drawings, and paintings depicting the bird. What we know for sure is that the dodo was a pretty big bird. Early descriptions in the early Dutch settlers' journals detailed fowl twice as big as swans and small ostriches. Fossils and skeletons of birds carried back to Europe show that adult dodos ranged between two and two and a half feet in height. Weight was never documented when the birds were alive, but estimates are in the 20 to 40 pound range for wild birds and 45 to 60 pounds for captive individuals. In 2016, CT scans of composite skeletons were used to come up with an estimate of 23 to 32 pounds. English paleontologist Julian P. Hume claimed that the dodo's weight may have fluctuated from season to season. The bird would have gained weight for the cooler seasons and gradually slimmed down when it got warm. The species was also believed to be sexually dimorphic, with males being larger than females. The skull is distinct among Columbidae species, mainly because of its size. The hooked beak is also different from other pigeons and doves. Males had proportionally bigger beaks than females. Dodo skeletons have 41 vertebra, with pronounced neck vertebra that indicate that the birds had significant muscles and ligaments to support their large heads. There are six ribs and wing bones proportionally smaller than any existing pigeon species. However, the pelvic and leg bones are also proportionally bigger, a clear sign of the bird's terrestrial nature. Plumage and coloring are not 100% certain, but reports and depictions indicate that dodos were brownish-gray in color with lighter plumage at the breast, underbelly, and tail. Their thick legs are often depicted as yellowish, and their claws are shown to be black. Like many other birds, chicks may have been a different color to their parents. The consensus is that dodos were primarily frugivores, living almost entirely on the fallen fruit of their native tropical island. Roots and nuts may have been a supplementary part of the diet. However, experts theorize that they also preyed on the abundant crustaceans. The beak certainly looks like it was powerful enough to crack open shells. Further evidence pointing to the dodo being omnivorous is the likelihood that the sailors who took them back to Europe fed them all kinds of food on the voyages. Francis Staub, a Mauritian ornithologist, deduced that dodos fattened themselves at the end of the rainy season to endure the leaner months of the year. This theory was based on local palm trees, which fruit in the wet season. European settlers also alleged that the bird was greedy. However, whether this was a general truth or simply part of the necessary self-fattening is unclear. Bears have similar eating cycles where they feast to bulk up for winter, but describing this as greedy seems a little harsh. Dodos were also described as confident birds that feared nothing, including the unfamiliar human settlers. They would walk about nonchalantly, foraging and going about their usual business without paying the humans too much mind. The settlers were astounded by this behavior and figured that the birds were simply too stupid to fear people. However, after millennia or even millions of years with no natural predators, perhaps the dodo had forgotten all about fear. Dodos were notoriously easy to bait and catch, but they did have some fight about them. Journals detail the ferocity and power with which the dodo could defend itself. Its beak was its primary defense, and it could deliver excruciating bites to would-be captors. Little is known about dodo reproduction, but many experts believe females laid one egg at a time. Columbidae birds are known to lay small clutches. With no natural predators, the dodo didn't need too many eggs. Compare this to the larger ostrich, which lays up to 18 eggs per clutch because of the never-ending list of nest raiders. Dodo chicks hatched around early August and reached a near-adult size by November when the cyclone season began. Extinction The common theory is that dodos were hunted to extinction by humans for food, but this is unlikely. Many reports claim that dodo meat wasn't great and a far cry behind traditional poultry. However, humans were the chief architect of the dodo's downfall, albeit indirectly. For starters, human settlers harvested tons of ebony trees. This was epic habitat destruction and would have led to the accidental destruction of dodo nests. Secondly, the settlers brought pets like cats and dogs as well as invasive species like rats, monkeys, and deer. This introduced both competition and predation to the under-equipped dodo.
Cats, dogs, monkeys, and rats would wreak havoc on nests, feasting on eggs and preying on defenseless chicks. Deer and monkeys would compete for fruit and vegetation, leaving the dodos to starve. At the same time, humans just sat back and watched it happen. In the 16th and 17th centuries, people had no idea that a species could be wiped out for good. Extinction, as we know it, simply wasn't part of the vocabulary at the time. So conservation wasn't a thing either. By 1681, less than 100 years after Van Wyck and his men first landed, the dodo was gone from Mauritius. Only a few specimens transported to Europe survived, but they died out too because no one practiced captive breeding at a scale that could save the species. Dodos in Culture Today, the dodo is the go-to example of how badly human activity can devastate animals. Conservation groups use the bird to inspire efforts to save critically endangered species that may go the way of the dodo without human intervention. The dodo has also been used in pop culture works like Lewis Carroll's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. It is often used to symbolize low intelligence and bumbling clumsiness. The bird has a bit more respect in its native Mauritius. The bird is part of the national coat of arms and is the national bird. The nation's soccer team is also nicknamed the Dodos. But as you would expect, they're not very good.